it's fresh, it's fast, and it's filling. Hey beautiful people, how are you today? The sun is shining in the UK. If you don't live in the UK, you maybe you don't understand how amazing it is. The sun is finally shining again after months in the dark. Um, anyway, I have been having the most fun um, between baking and making these healthy bowls of scrumbunctious food after I finish training in the morning. I've just started to put them on my Instagram account. So if you're not on my Instagram, do go to at Lorraine Pascal and you'll see all these beautiful bowls. And the other day I did a bowl and I cheated the two ingredients which I got from the supermarket, the uh, artichoke and the olives and the feta. Um, but other than that, I made everything from scratch and it's like um, butternut squash and chickpea falafel, tzatziki, pan fried aubergine, um, what else is there? Anyway, there's a whole plethora of scrumbunctiousness that I'd love to share with you. So I'm going to get on with the recipe straight away. And um, I hope that you make it because it's, it's seriously, it's really good. It's really tasty. I'm eating them every day. And I've got a whole fridge full of fresh vegetables and produce, which is a good feeling, isn't it? I think it's a good feeling. Anyway, let's get on with the recipe. We're starting off with aubergines. I'm just doing pan fried aubergines. You can do baba ganoush, which is a delicious Middle Eastern um, side, but I'm just gonna do pan fried aubergines. So I've just put a little bit of oil in a pan here, I'm just using vegetable oil, and I've sliced up an aubergine, half an aubergine into one centimeter slices. And just pop those in a pan, leaving a bit of room in between them so that they can um, get nice and black and I cook those for about three minutes on each side in this hot pan and then, well that's very black because that's the skin <laughs> and then once they're looking roughly like that flip them over and cook them again on the other side and then hummus, traditionally the hummus is iPad actually I don't know, I can't start talking about tradition because I don't know um, but basically the, all the hummus that I've ever had is like a mixture of it's chickpeas isn't it with some tahini in it but I thought why don't we do something different so actually it's because I wanted to use the chickpeas for the falafel. So what I did instead was I made a hummus out of peas. Um, so you put all the ingredients together in a blender and mix them together and it's really tasty and you can make it in bulk. But yeah, it's a delicious pea and mint hummus. And I've got some peas here, but a handful of peas, uh, frozen peas. It's just easy to do it in handfuls, isn't it? And then this is literally a pinch of onion, not too much, and one tablespoon of Greek yogurt and one tablespoon of tahini which is like a sesame paste that's tahini all in and then some mint a few leaves and one clove of garlic and I'm adding a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil just to loosen up a bit and then pop the lid on and um, give it a blitz I know I need to sort out my angles it's not looking very uh, appealing whoop there it is you have to shake the the mixer a little bit because it's not the softest of mixtures, the most liquid of mixtures, but just keep blending it, scrape it down, re-blend and there's your hummus. Alright, and next it's the falafel. <laughs> and this is just a mixture of all sorts really. I've got the chickpeas and, and then I added some butternut squash because I had some in the fridge and I just put some different flavours in there and at the end I did have to add some flour because my mixture was a bit wet. So I, I added some quinoa, you can use a coconut flour, I know a lot of people got coconut flour, or just regular plain flour, and I think it's about when you're making this kind of thing, it's, I, I've, if I've done, I'm going to write the ingredients underneath, but I'm going to do it in like hand sizes, apart from the can of beans and the can of chickpeas, just because it's so much easier to do, because baking is so precise, which I love doing as well, baking is so precise, and if you freestyle it, the recipe's not going to work, but with this kind of recipe, as long as you know what you're looking for, you can freestyle it a little bit and add bits and pieces to make it your own. So, falafel next. So I've got one tin of chickpeas, I think it's about 400, is it 400 grams or something, drained, I'll pop those in uh, the blender. And then um, I've got a clove of garlic, clove of garlic and some cumin seeds. I'm adding about a teaspoon of cumin seeds and then a teaspoon of paprika. In it goes. And then 
just to add a bit of herbs, herbaceous deliciousness, I'm adding a handful of coriander, a lot of people don't like it, you can leave it out, a handful of cubed butternut squash, cooked and drained, I cheated, I got one of those microwave packages, and just about a quarter of an onion, don't want it too oniony, and then a quarter of an egg as well. So then I blitzed all of that up, and yeah, it, it was a bit wet, so I added a bit of flour. And then next it's time to coat them ready for pan frying. So um, I started to roll these, oops, I started to roll these into balls. Um, I think it makes about 10 or 12. I rolled it into balls, I put some flour on the plate, and I realised I forgot to put the sesame seeds on. So I've got these black roasted sesame seeds, ready roasted, really nice. I sprinkle those on over the flour. You can use regular flour or coconut or spelt, whatever you want. And then I'm you're also doing these white sesame seeds. So they're mixed in with the, um, with the flour. And then you just want to get a ball. It's about three, four centimetres across. And then press it in the uh, sesame seeds. And then you get this nice sesame seed crunch on the outside of your falafel. I should say they're like falafel style, shouldn't I? <laughs> rolling it in, I'm just rolling it around there, I want it nice and covered, and just keep going until you've done all of them like so. And I roll them in a ball and then I squash them down a bit um, to give you that sort of, that look. But you can do it however you like. When I was researching tzatziki, there were so many different ways of making it, so I just thought I'd choose the simplest way and the way that I like it um, with uh, just your cucumber and yogurt and things in, and you can use I don't know. Can you use you can use soy yogurt? Cause you can kind of try and make this vegan, like in the falafel. If you don't use an egg, you could use oil or something. And um, my memory is not working today. <laughs> I don't know what is going on. Satsiki, yeah, satsiki. And then I put a bit of garlic in. You have to be careful with the garlic because otherwise it's a bit stinky. Pot, stinky pants, a bit stinky. Um, it's actually nicer to use roasted garlic, but I didn't have time to roast the garlic. Didn't have time. So, chuck it all in. Tatsiki. So this is half a cucumber that I've peeled and cubed. You can leave the skin on if you like. I find it a bit tough. And then here I've got about five tablespoons of 0% Greek fat yoghurt and a handful of mint leaves that I've just cut up finely. And this comes in so many different variations, doesn't it? Tatsiki. Um, and then I've also added salt and pepper and then about half a clove of garlic. And I just mixed it up and this is great because you can make a, a batch of this and keep it in the fridge. Zoom in. And then next um, I pan fried it. Bit of vegetable oil. I'm going to experiment with avocado oil actually. I have used it before but I wasn't really focusing on how it reacted. But apparently like, avocado oil, because they say vegetable oil is not very... They say vegetable oil is not very good, not great for you at all. So, but for the meantime I use vegetable oil to pan fry my falafel. And as there's not anything that technically needs to be cooked, oh, because the butternut squash was cooked um, already, but you just need to kind of crisp it up on the outside. So you, you do, I've tried to do this in a pan with no oil. It doesn't really work, it doesn't really work, not that well. You don't get the lovely crispy crunch, but it's okay, it's okay. You could just use a bit of spray oil. Um, but I'm all about high fat, I, I do eat a lot of fat, but let's do another video about that another time. So pan frying. next bit I keep saying I'm gonna do a creation story so you understand what on earth I'm, am I doing on YouTube um, and why I'm so passionate about it um, but in the meantime um, I like to do what I love as much as possible I spent a lot of my life not doing what I love or not doing what makes me happy I should say um, and so, so I'm very creative uh, my baking I like to try and create something different from a recipe that's maybe Everyone's used a lot, trying to do something different with it. And as well with um, this plating, it's my favourite part because you can get creative with the colours and the amounts you put in and the bowls that you choose. And it's my favourite part of, of making the whole thing because it just makes me happy. And 
and, and someone said to me, um, they're trying to make a decision and they weren't sure what to do. Do I do this or do I do that? And I said, when you start doing the thing, see how you feel. It sounds really obvious, but for me, it's like, when you, when you feel happy about it or excited about it, that's the route to go. No, as long as it's legal and healthy. Yeah, all right, <laughs> let's plate up. <laughs> using because I had those cereal bowls and then I had these square bowls I don't like square I really don't like square plates or square bowl what was a square bowl what does that even mean anyway these are pasta bowls and I found them on the internet I didn't even know they existed what do I know they're called pasta bowls so they're like wide and they're quite shallow so you can just build your masterpiece you can build your art on a plate on your pasta on your pasta bowl is what I like to call the finishing touches. Again, my hands are dry. Can someone please send me some moisturizer? I'll put my PO box underneath. Some good moisturizer, preferably uh, one for extra dry skin. Anyway, um, this is the dressing of it and I put a bit of paprika on top of the hummus because I've seen that, that a lot in restaurants on top of the hummus. And then I chopped up some more mint and sprinkled it on the tzatziki. And then I got some pomegranates I didn't bother getting the whole thing. It's, you know, the actual fruit. I just got a packet from um, m and Ready done. And I just put them on the top so you've got bursts of colour and flavour and taste. It's fresh, it's fast and it's filling. Okay, that's my Mediterranean style bowl done. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Do hit the share button and share the recipe with someone you think would like to have that for lunch this week. And give me a big thumbs up. It makes me smile when I see that you've given me a big thumbs up. Comment in the box below. Let me know if there's any other recipes you'd like to see me do or any other vlogs or something, something. And subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. Welcome to all my new subscribers. And um, I'll speak to you, I'll speak to you tomorrow. Big love. Mm.